Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Concept in Medicine. We are going to be looking at pulse pressure today. I am sure you are wondering why pulse pressure. Why pulse pressure? Because every time you go to the hospital, your blood pressure is measured. And the question comes into mind. What is the name of the device used to measure blood pressure? Most people will say sphygmo or sphig, but the complete name is sphygmo manometer. And this word is not just for fun. It is made up of two words. We have the sphygmo and we have the manometer. If we say sphygmo, then you go back into the studies, the science studies. One of the sciences that studies pulse is what we call sphygmology. So if you are saying sphygmo, automatically we are referring to pulse. So the sphygmo manometer, it main use is to help you to obtain the pulse pressure. Meaning that whatever values that you are going to obtain from using the sphygmo manometer with regards to the blood pressure, you should be able to what? get the pulse pressure. Then the question go, what then is pulse pressure? So in short, pulse pressure is the difference between the systolic blood pressure and the diastolic blood pressure. When you measure blood pressure, what values do you get? Don't you have the systolic blood pressure over the diastolic blood pressure? So if you have these two values, then it means you can also obtain the pulse pressure by subtracting the diastolic blood pressure from the systolic blood pressure. And that should give you the pulse pressure. Now, let's talk about the normal values of the pulse pressure. For the normal value of the pulse pressure, first of all, you should know the normal blood pressure. Anytime we are asked about the normal blood pressure, we normally say that, this is what we say every time, the normal blood pressure is uh, less than 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury, meaning that for the systolic blood pressure, it's going to be less than 120 millimeters of mercury, and the diastolic blood pressure is going to be less than 80 millimeters of mercury. But we have not asked ourselves, what are the limits? What will be the upper limit? What will be the lower limit? We've not been asking. So if somebody comes and the systolic blood pressure is 10 millimeters of mercury, based on mathematical analogy, 10 is less than 120, and that should be normal, right? But unfortunately, no. Such a pressure, definitely the patient will be dead. So we cannot consider 10 millimeters of mercury as a normal systolic blood pressure. Rather, there are ranges. So let's look at those ranges. So for the normal blood pressure, yes, we agree that it is less, the systolic blood pressure is less than 120 millimeters of mercury, but what is the interval? The interval is that the systolic blood pressure normally ranges from 90 millimeters of mercury to 119 millimeters of mercury. The diastolic blood pressure, I agree, is less than 80 millimeters of mercury, but the interval, what is it? From 60 millimeters of mercury to 79 millimeters of mercury. That is why we say that anytime we have our systolic going below 90 millimeters of mercury and or our diastolic blood pressure going below 60 millimeters of mercury, then we are saying we are saying that the patient is experiencing shock or the patient has gone into shock, hypotension, right? So meaning that our normal blood pressure should not be in the hypotensive regions. That's what we are trying to say. So once we have the normal blood pressure. How do we get a normal pulse pressure? What is pulse pressure again? Systolic blood pressure minus diastolic blood pressure. All you have to do is to take the lower limits of both the systolic and the diastolic and find the difference. And again, take the, the upper limit of both the systolic and the diastolic and find the difference. And what would that give you? We are going to have 90 minus 60. That will give you 30. 119 minus 79, that will give you 40. And that would give us our pulse pressure, normal pulse pressure, to be 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury. I hope you've gotten this. There's no need to cram these values. All you have to know is to know the normal blood pressure. That is the range of the normal blood pressure. Now, let's move on. Let's talk about the abnormalities of the pulse pressure. Now we have the normal values. Then should it be going lower than the lower limit of the normal pulse pressure? Or should it be going higher than the 
upper limit of the pulse pressure, then we can see that it will be as a result of a pathological cause. Let's look at that. Okay, so when we have the pulse pressure going below, we said before that the normal pulse pressure ranges from 30 to 40 millimeters of mercury. If it's like this, we say it's normal pulse pressure. That's what we said. If the pulse pressure is lower than 30 millimeters of mercury, which is the lower limit of the normal pulse pressure, then we say that that pulse pressure is narrow, it's closer. When can we have that? We can have that when the systolic blood pressure is decreasing and the diastolic blood pressure is still at the same place, or the systolic blood pressure is constant and the diastolic blood pressure is increasing. That will give us that. Or the systolic blood pressure is decreasing while the diastolic blood pressure is increasing. So those are the three scenarios that can give you narrow pulse pressure. And for the causes, there is an acronym that I have developed to help you know all the causes. And that acronym is HATTAP. Maybe in the comment section, you can also write or comment your derived acronym for the causes. That will be very interesting. And I'll be waiting for your own acronyms in the comment section. So for the causes of a narrow pulse pressure, remember to use the acronym HATTAP. What does it mean? The H stands for hypovolemia. The A would go for aortic stenosis, which is considered one of the most common causes of a narrow pulse pressure. Wherever you see narrow pulse pressure, think of aortic stenosis first. Then the next one, that's tachycardia. Then again, we can also think of the constrictive pericarditis, ascites, and finally, pericardial effusion. I'll be waiting to see your own acronym in the comment section. For the causes of wide pulse pressure, when do we say the pulse pressure is wide? It is when the pulse pressure is greater than 40 millimeters of mercury, which is the upper limit of the normal pulse pressure. And what are the causes? For the causes, we can use part B, C. P, A to the power 5, T, B, E, S, S, I. Again, you can also derive your own acronym from these courses and let me know in the comment section. So for the courses of wide pulse pressure using the acronym, the first one, the P, goes for the patent due to arteriosis. The A, there are five of them. So we'll start the aortic regurgitation, which is considered as the most common cause of a wide pulse pressure. Then another A, in no specific order, atrial fibrillation. Another A, arteriovenous Fistulas, another A, aortic coartation. Another A, which is the fifth one, arteriosclerosis. Then the T, tyrotoxicosis. Then the B, beriberi. The E, an emotional state. The first S, severe anemia. Another S, septic shock. And the I, isolated systolic hypertension. I hope that sounded interesting to you and i'll be waiting for your own acronym in the comment section boss thank you very much and please subscribe share like and leave a comment in the comment section about what you would like to see in my next video and also don't forget i'll be looking forward to seeing your various acronym for the causes of the narrow and wide pulse pressure. This is concept in medicine. It's a bye for now.